Okay, so I guess nandito ka kasi nakikita mo na yung dalawang letra dun sa dulo ng pangalan mo, yung pinaka-inaasam-asam mo. And now it's just four years between you and those MD. So congratulations and welcome to the biggest trap of your life. Hey everyone, this is Doc Jerry and welcome back to my channel. Disclaimer lang, yung mga i-discuss ko sa video na to, I'm not saying na ganito sa lahat ng medical schools. But at least for this video, I'll talk about my experience coming from UST. Kwento ko na lang din muna kung yung pinakamalaking difference na pag-aaral sa UST and sa ibang medical schools. As far as I know. Sa ibang medical schools, minsan lang yung quizzes nila. So yung iba, halos monthly lang sila nag -e exam I mean, you might think, what's wrong with that, di ba? Pero para sa akin kasi mas nakakatakot yun. Kasi syempre mas konti yung sources ng grades nyo eh. Sa amin kasi sa UST, we have quizzes every day. Hindi lang isa, hindi lang dalawa. Minsan umaabot ng 8 quizzes per day. Triage your feelings at its peak talaga. Nangyayari yun kasi minsan sa isang subject nag-quiz kayo before and after the lecture. And sa isang araw kasi hindi lang isang lecture yun. The good thing about that is... Siyempre, mas marami kami pagkukuha na ng grades namin. Mas may chance kaming makabawi kung baga kung bumagsa kami sa iba. Ang downside naman nun for us ay siyempre, lagari everyday. Hindi ka pwedeng tama rin kahit isang araw. Para makasabay nun, naaalala ko, nagsisimula na akong mag-aral ng Sabado para sa mga quizzes ko ng Tuesday and Wednesday. Tapos mag-aaral ako ng Sunday para sa mga quizzes ko ng Monday. Ang pahinga ko lang talaga nun, naaalala ko ay Friday night. So anyway, I believe na dapat factor yun sa pagpili nyo ng medical schools. Okay, ikukwento ko pala yung medical school experience ko year by year. Teka lang, nakalimutan ko sabihin na bagong ligo ako kaya... Hindi, pagbigyan nyo na, hindi ko alam kung saan ako magpapagupit. Okay, first year, dito mawiwin lang yung buong pagkatao mo. Siyempre, bagong graduate ka ng college. So, so dun mo palang marirealize na tapos na yung mga masasayang araw mo. <laughs> first time mo rin mapifeel dito yung pressure ng med school. And if maganda yung culture ng medical school nyo, dito rin yung first time na matatawag kang doc. At dito rin yung first time na kikiligin ka dahil lang sa iisang salita. Para sa akin, ito yung pinaka-challenging na time ko ng med school. Yung unang buwan kasi, ah, uh, paano ba? Perhaps baka first time mo lang nagdo-dorm nun. O kaya wala ka pang study style na talagang swak para sa'yo. Or perhaps di ka pa sanay magpuyat. Or perhaps hindi ka sanay at nagulat ka na 120 kayo sa isang klase. At yung lecture nyo hindi sa normal na classroom kundi sa AVR. Yung tipong pataas yung upuan, tapos nakamike lang yung lecturer sa harap. Or perhaps hirap ka pa mag-adjust sa iba't ibang departments sa medical school. Kasi, yes, sa medical school may sariling department ang iba't ibang subjects. For example, there's a department of anatomy solely responsible for that subject. That being said, yes, iba't ibang lecturer din yung pumapasok sa inyo per topic. That alone, masusubukan na yung adapting tsaka yung adjusting skills mo. Gone are the days na madali yung subject dahil mabait yung isang prof. Walang ganun sa med school. And that will be the new norm for you. You'll have to adjust to every lecturer for any topic from any subjects until you graduate. Kaya during this time, kailangan mo i-reassess yung study habit mo. And I'll be making another video on that, okay? Dito din pala, marami kang makikilalang mamaw sa pag-aaral. Dito mo rin unang mararamdaman na kulang pala yung alam mo at marami ka palang hindi alam. And that's normal, guys. Lahat tayo dadaan doon. For the next few months, makukuha mo yung groove niya. Don't worry. And masasanay ka naman. Siyempre, dapat masanay ka. Dito rin pala pumapasok yung edge mo from your pre-med course. For example, ako, I was familiar with anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, all those from my pre-med. So that's my edge. Tulad ng sabi ko dati, hindi dadali yung buhay mo. Pero familiarity is really, really, really a vital part of surviving med school. Lastly pala, I wanna say na yung first year, Diyan yung pinakamarami kayong oras, but you won't realize it until you look back. I mean, ganun ka fast-paced sa medical school. Isang iglap lang, four years down. Second year. Second year, hindi ko, wala ko masyadong masabi sa part na to. By this time, for sure, meron ka ng sariling study style. May sariling style ka na rin sa pag-handle ng oras mo. Mas flexible ka na kumbaga. Para sa akin, ito yung taon na parang abagal ng oras. Maraming subjects sa second year na kayang aralin on your own. For example, Biochemistry, for example, microbiology, parasitology. In that life, ito rin yung time na natuto ako mag-cut for the first time in my life. Yes, never ako nag-cut ng college. Hindi ko alam kung dapat kong puriin yung sarili ko dun. But yes, would you believe na first time ko mag-cut in second year med school? Although mas marami kang aaralin sa taon na to, kumpara sa first year, mas hawak mo na kasi yung oras mo dito eh. Hindi dahil... 
hindi dahil mas marami kang oras. Pero I think siguro, tulad ng sabi ko kanina, na master mo na yung flexibility mo eh. So, alam mo yun, kaya mo nag-split, <laughs> kaya mo nag-bend. <laughs> Unlike sa US pala, you don't need to start your licensure process at this time. But, did you know na pwede ka mag-take na preliminary PLE after your second year in med school? Don't ask me kung anong subjects yung mga yun dahil nakalimutan ko na. Third year, I'm not sure if this applies to all, pero sa UST kasi, pag-apak mo ng third year, magbabago yung uniform nyo from the uh, colored ones to v-neck. Para siyang rite of passage para sa lahat ng medical students. Buong populasyon ng university, kasama ni mga junior medical students, lahat yan titingala sa'yo. Ganun yung feeling. So sa first day nyo, dun din yung first time nakikiligin ka dahil lang sa isang outfit. Third year, ito yung time na sobrang daming clinical information na pumapasok sa utak nyo. Ang dami-dami-dami mo kailangang arali at hindi mo alam kung paano pagkakasyahin yung 24 hours mo sa isang araw. Promise, ang dami kong inalay ng third year ako. Alay as in, pinabayaan ko yung exam na to para mag-aral sa exam na to. And yes, that happens a lot. Pero kung iisipin nyo kasi, lost yun yung estudyante. Lalo na pag hindi nyo nabalikan yun. For example, search nyo na lang sa sasabihin ko. Pero hanggang ngayon, hirap na hirap pa rin akong alalahanin kung ano yung mga myotomes and yung dermatomes. Up until now, I still struggle with it. Hmm. In retrospect, actually, ito yung pinakagusto kong taon. Lahat ng medical students may strong feelings towards it. Either you love it or you hate it. Pero, ewan ko, for some reason, I... Nagustuhan ko yung challenge, nagustuhan ko yung learnings, medyo na-fulfill yung fantasy ko na ito na, medyo nagiging doktor na. Also by this time pala, dumadami na yung hospital exposure niyo. And I really love that kahit na ang dami kong reklamo sa init, sa hassle. It's really fun to see whatever you learned in the classroom outside the books and in actual patients. Kaya ako nasabi na in retrospect, sobrang nagustuhan ko yung third year medical school. Fourth year. This year is also called your junior internship or your clerkship. Ito yung time na mas marami kang oras na sinispend. Ano ba? Paano ba sabihin yun? Ah, uh, ito yung time na you'll be spending most of your time in the hospital. Siguro madami yung 2 to 3 hours sa classroom per day if any at all. Minsan wala eh. Sa taon na to, sobrang hands-on na kayo dito. From getting your patient's vitals, to assisting in the ORs. Ano nga ninyahan namin dito? Sabak lang. During this time, you'll be learning the basics of learn. During this time, you'll be learning the basics of how to take care of a patient and how a hospital... And the basics of how hospitals run. Minsan, if you're lucky enough or malas, depends on how you look at it. You'll be able to rotate outside. Ibig sabihin, ako, for example, nag-rotate ako sa Tondo Medical Center, tsaka sa San Lazaro. Dito talaga mako-forge yung... For some. For some, ha? Dito talaga mako-forge yung gusto mong specialty. Ito kasi yung time na malalaman mo kung ano yung love mo tsaka yung hate mo sa isang specialty. Yung pro and cons, pag gusto mo yung specialty na yun. Dito mo kasi makikita talaga yung lifestyle ng iba't ibang doktor. So ayun, binigyan ko lang kayo ng virtual imaginary tour of medical schooling in the Philippines. Let me tell you, some of the best moments and the darkest moments of your life will happen in med school. So be resilient, okay? And keep in mind na kaya mo lahat ng ilatag sa harap mo. Because what? You are stronger than your troubles. Okay guys, nakalimutan ko magsama ng daily learning. So, ito, iahabol ko na. Let's talk about minor burns or paso. Ano ba ang paso? Basically, it's tissue damage caused by extreme temperature. For example, you came in contact with direct flame. O kaya, napaso ka sa isang mainit na bagay. Or, pwede rin natalamsikan ka ng mainit na tubig. Pwede rin natapunan ka ng isang chemical na nakakasunog. So, ang burns, pwede mo yung i-classify as first degree. Ibig sabihin, nasa ibabaw lang ng balat yung burn. Second degree, mas malalim siya kaysa sa epidermis, kaya pwede magkaroon ng blistering or yung paltos. Yung mga third degree burn naman, yun ay mga mas malalim, exposed na yung mga muscle, etc. So, we will not discuss that, okay? Ang i-discuss ko lang ngayon ay yung mga minor burns, yung mga mahahapde, pwede rin pamumula lang, pwedeng may paltos tulad yung sinabi ko kanina. Anything deeper than that, lalo na yung mga burns na wala ka nang nararamdaman o kaya hindi na masakit, maybe you will, hindi pala maybe, you will need urgent hospital care for those. So, proceed to the nearest ER, okay? All caps yan. Okay, the first thing you will do, as in any case of accidents, sana accident lang yan, is to prevent further exposure. Kung baga lumayo na kayo sa source ng paso nyo, alam nga namang tumayo pa kayo sa tabi ng apoy, And para sa mga responders naman, a friendly reminder na put your safety first before hurrying to others, okay? Next, ano ba yung goal? Ito kasi yung lagi nakakalimutan eh. Kaya wag na wag nyong kakalimutan to, okay? All caps na naman yan. 
the goal is to prevent further tissue damage. Yung tissue damage kasi hindi yan natatapos at the point of contact. Ibig sabihin, after mong mapaso, tuloy-tuloy pa rin na naluluto yung area na yun. So what you can do is to cool that area down. Preferably, padaanan nyo sa running cool water. Cool ah, guys, hindi cold. Ibig sabihin, hindi warm, hindi masyado malamig, yung sakto lang. Kahit pa abutin nyo na ng 10 minutes, tubig lang naman yun. And then, avoid applying ice or anything cold kasi it can cause further damage. Pag may paltos naman, yung mga paltos na yan, hayaan nyo lang yan, guys. Huwag nyo nang paglaruan, huwag nyo nang kutkutin, huwag nyo nang putukin. Baka maging source pa yan ng dehydration, lalo na pag medyo malaki yung surface area ng burn, or baka ma-infect pa yun. Ayaw natin yun, guys. Lastly, okay lang uminom ng mga pain meds na over-the-counter. Pero remember, lahat ng sobra masama. So use with moderation. That's it for today. Don't forget to treat your feelings. Bye!